Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my general chemistry mini lecture. Today's topic uh, is pretty fundamental but important. So we'll talk about chemical equations and uh, how to balance it. And it's important because uh, it is required um, to balance the chemical equation before you can do stoichiometry calculation. OK, so first, um, what is chemical equation? It is symbolic represented uh, chemical reactions. So uh, we use those formulas, symbols, um, to represent chemical reactions. So um, it's easier to draw instead of to write a, a paragraph of the chemical reactions. So for example, we have lead nitrate um, in aqueous solution, react with potassium iodide, also in aqueous solution, produce lead to iodide and potassium nitrate. This lead iodide is a solid state and uh, so it's a precipitate in this reaction. And the other product is potassium nitrate. It's also aqueous solution. So in this chemical equation, uh, in a very simple formulas and uh, symbols and uh, signs, and then it can represent a very complicated chemical change. Okay, here, this arrow mean producing. Okay, so usually we put the reactant to the left and then product to the right of this arrow. Okay, so you can have more than one, you could have two, you could have three, you could have just the one reactant. And you can also have just the one product or you can have more than one. For example, in this example, there are two products. And you may notice that AQ as AQ means aqueous, I just mentioned, that's the water solution. Water solution, S means it's not soluble in water, so it's called a precipitate. So that is the physical state of the reactant or product. Okay, so S means solid, L means liquid, gas, it's G, water solution is AQ. Here shows this uh, examples, right? So in this reaction, we don't see the liquid or gas, just the solid and aqueous solution. We also will see the coefficient. You may notice I just add one to here because if you don't see any number here, that means it's one. That's called a coefficient. So the coefficient means the formula or the stoichiometry of this reaction. So if you look at the number, that means this is one formula of this lead to nitrate will react with two formula of this potassium iodide, will produce one formula of the lead to iodide, and then produce also produce two formula of the potassium nitrate. This is called the coefficient ratio, and we need this ratio for stoichiometry. Okay, in a stoichiometry, um, we will use this coefficient ratio as mole ratio. Now, how to balance the chemical equation? This is the rule, okay? This is the rule. For each element, for example, in this example, we have lead, we have nitrogen, we have oxygen, we have potassium, we have iodine. So for each element, the number of atoms in the reactant, in the reactants, that means before the reaction, and that number of atoms for each element must equal to the number of atoms in the product, in the product. So then this chemical equation is balanced. This is the example is already balanced. For example, lead. We have one lead atom in the reactant. There's no lead here. So in a product, there's one lead. There's no lead here. So lead is balanced. Nitrogen, we have two nitrogen here. 
So this two multiplies so one subscript here, that's two nitrogen. So you have to multiply two nitrogen atom in the product. There are two nitrogen atom. And oxygen, there are six oxygen in the reactant. There are six oxygen in the product. Two times three is six oxygen. There are two potassium atom, two potassium atom. One or uh, two iodine atom, two iodine atom. So it's balanced. Okay, it's very important. Okay, I just mentioned. In the balanced chemical equation, the coefficient ratio is also more ratio. So in my other video, you may see the example to do the stoichiometry calculation, but they all need uh, based on the balanced chemical equation. Okay, I will give you more examples, the balancing chemical equation. Here we have uh, four reactions. Uh, the first reaction is the natural gas burned in oxygen produce carbon dioxide and water. Yeah, since we are focusing on the balancing, so I didn't draw those physical state here. So, sorry, I'm lazy. So now, to balance the chemical equation, the, uh, you need to make sure each element before and after reaction, the number of atoms is the same. So for carbon, we can look one by one. Carbon, there's one carbon here, uh, no carbon here. So one carbon in the reactant, Look at the product, there's no carbon here, water, so only carbon dioxide. So it looks like carbon, it's one atom at both sides, so that's already balanced. Look at the hydrogen, there are four hydrogen atoms. In the product, there are only two hydrogen atoms, so we need change the coefficient to two from one. Now we have four hydrogen atoms, four hydrogen atoms, now that's balanced. Then we can look at the oxygens. We have two oxygen atoms here. We have two oxygen here, but also two oxygen here. There are four oxygen atoms in the product. So we need to raise this coefficient to two. Then oxygen atoms will be same before and after reaction. So now it's balanced chemical equation. Now look at the other reaction here. The second one is potassium chlorate. When you heat it, when you see this triangle, that means the reaction need higher temperature, usually it's heat, and then produce potassium chloride and oxygen gas here. This is an oxygen molecule. So you can look at the potassium here. Potassium looks like it's already balanced. Both sides is one potassium atom. Look at the chlorine. Chlorine looks like it's also balanced. One chlorine, one chlorine. Oxygen, there are three oxygen atoms. There are two oxygen atoms, so that's not balanced. So to balance this oxygen, we can change the coefficient to two for this potassium chlorate, and then change the coefficient here to three. Now we have a six oxygen atom at both sides, so the oxygen is balanced. Oxygen balanced, but potassium chlorine will not be the balanced now because you just raise this to two. So we have two potassium and two chlorine in the reactant. In the product, we only have one potassium and one chlorine. So to change this coefficient to two, we'll balance this whole uh, equation. That's the second example. Now, third one, we have aluminum react with uh, the hydrochloric acid, produce aluminum chloride and hydrogen gas. Now look at aluminum. One aluminum, one aluminum, that's balanced. Hydrogen, there's one hydrogen, there's two hydrogen. So seems like not balanced. We can also look at the chlorine. There's one chlorine, there's three chlorine. So that's also not balanced. So we need to change uh, the coefficient of the hydrochloric acid, the hydrogen. So first I will change this to six. You may, uh, you may see why six. Uh, why don't change to three? Because we don't have a three chlorine here. Because I, I can see if I change this to three, they have three hydrogen, uh, two hydrogen, that's still not balanced. But if I change it to six, then I can change this coefficient to two, then I have a six chlorine in the product balanced. And the six hydrogen, this two, so I change that to three, uh, then I can balance hydrogen. 
The last one, you have to go back to check the aluminum. I have, now I have two aluminum, so I have to change this coefficient of aluminum to two. Now it's all balanced. Last example in, on this page is the zinc react with the iron three sulfate, produce zinc sulfate and the iron three element. So this is a single replacement and uh, zinc looks like it's already balanced. Iron is not. There are two iron, just one iron. So we will, uh, and also sulfate. So you see there's only one sulfate. We treated this as SO4. It's actually two minus. It's a sulfate, a polyatomic anion. And there are three sulfate, just one sulfate. The trick is to treat this sulfate as one unit. So change that coefficient of zinc sulfate to three, then we will balance the sulfate now. And then uh, since you change the zinc uh, coefficient of zinc sulfate, so now we have a three zinc, only one zinc here. So we change this coefficient of zinc to three. Now worry about the iron. So we have three uh, sulfate, but two iron here, just one iron here. So we change the coefficient to two to balance the iron. Now it's all balanced. Okay, this is another uh, rule actually. So the rule is the coefficient ratio must be simplest whole ratio. Okay, the coefficient also must be whole number. I just said. Okay, so if you have a sodium react with water, so it can produce the sodium hydroxide and the hydrogen gas. So this reaction is vigorous. It could be an uh, explosion, and we can balance the sodium hydroxide change the coefficient to two, and then we will have balanced the hydrogen. Because when you change this to two, uh, then we have a four hydrogen, right? Two plus two, four hydrogen. So when you change the coefficient to two, then you have a four hydrogen atom. And then you also balance oxygen. You have two oxygen, two oxygen. And so last one should be sodium because we have two sodium here, so you have changed the coefficient to two. So this is how you balance this reaction. And now the coefficient ratio, it is two to two to two to one. That's the simplest whole number ratio. Now, if you say, I think if you use this four, 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 two as coefficient, that's also balanced. Yes, it is balanced, but it's against this rule. So four to four to four to two is not the simplest whole number ratio. So, so that this is wrong. The first one is right. Okay. Now, another example is this is uh, ethane and uh, react with oxygen. This is combustion uh, that will produce high temperature, um, produce carbon dioxide and water. So we would balance the carbon first, change that coefficient to two. Now you have two carbon and two carbon. And then hydrogen, we have two hydrogen, we have two hydrogen, that looks like it's balanced. But oxygen, uh, there's two oxygen here, but there are four oxygen, two times two is four plus one, that's five oxygen atoms. So you kind of need a 2.5 as coefficient here. But the coefficient must be whole number. So 2.5, we need to multiply with two to convert this to whole number. But you cannot just multiply two with this coefficient, just the one coefficient. If you need to multiply with two, you have to multiply with all the coefficient. So then the balanced equation will be two ethane react with five oxygen, produce four carbon dioxide and two water. Now it's also simplest ratio, two to five to four to two is already simplest whole number ratio. Okay. Last one, we'll talk about the neutralization of acid and base. So um, to balance these four examples, you can notice that acid always have a proton here. We call it a proton, it's H plus here. Okay, and also have a hydroxide as a base. If this is the case, and uh, then the net ionic equation is actually the proton react with hydroxide, produce water. The ratio is one to one to one. So one proton react with one hydroxide produce one water. Keep that in mind, the balancing of neutralization will be much simple. For example, here we see one proton, one hydroxide, so one water. 
seems like it's already balanced. And actually it is balanced. Sodium one, sodium one, chlorine. So it's already naturally balanced. You don't need to change the coefficient. So coefficient ratio is one to one to one to one. For this one, sulfuric acid, there are two protons, lithium hydroxide, just one hydroxide. So you may need to change the coefficient to two because you know it's one to one ratio. If you have a two proton, you need two hydroxide and you will produce two water here, of course, because it's also one to one to one. It's kind of a proportion. Right? Now look at the lithium sulfate, two lithium, two lithium, one sulfate, one sulfate. So it's balanced. So this is done. The third example, we have a three proton and still just one hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. So we kind of need to raise the coefficient to three. So you also will produce, produce three water. Again, it's one to one to one ratio. If it is three, that should be three. That should be three. So then look at the potassium phosphate. It is balanced now. Right? It's three potassium atom, one phosphate as a whole unit, the polyatomic anion. So it's balanced now. Now look at the last example. We have one proton in the hydrobromic acid and the two hydroxide in the barium hydroxide, the base. So this time you need to raise the coefficient here to two because you want one to one ratio. Now it's two to two. So you also need to produce two water. Now look at the barium, one barium, one barium, two bromine, two bromine. So now it's balanced. So you can see if you keep this net ion equation in mind when you balance the neutralization should be uh, much faster. Okay, so uh, please let me know if you have more questions and, and good luck.